In this video, I'm sharing with you how I put together this gorgeous DIY using Dollar Tree items, and it looks like it came from a store, so you don't want to miss how I put this together. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Caitlin, and I love DIYs and crafting, so if that's something that you're into, I love putting together some inexpensive items to make gorgeous home decor that you would love to display in your home, and bringing you some new, fun, fresh ideas that you I can put together and DIY yourself for like all the seasonal as well as I make a ton of farmhouse decor. So if that's something that you're into, hit that subscribe button and please give me a big thumbs up because it really helps my channel to grow. For today's project, I am making this really fun craft. It's a larger piece using the Dollar Tree items that I think came together really pretty. It's a way that you can display some of your favorite photos, you can customize the colors, and it really just makes a gorgeous larger piece using Dollar Tree items. So I was so happy with how it turned out and I know you guys are gonna love it, so make sure you stay tuned and see how it came together. So without further ado, let's jump on into the video. So for this project, I'm using a couple of these Valentine signs from Dollar Tree. These were just in the seasonal decor section, and they're two of the large love signs. I've had these for a few years now. I'm going to start by removing the metal hearts off of these signs. I tried to use a pair of scissors to remove these, but I just found it easier if you could just kind of get a little bit of it peeled off. They just peel right up. This does leave a little bit of a glue residue, so I did have to sand that down. But these little hearts are perfect to save for future projects. So after I got all these cleared off and took the tags off, I'm going to, like I say, sand that glue down and then I go ahead and sand the letters just a tiny bit to make sure the surface is really smooth. I will be hot gluing a ton of uh, items to these signs so you don't have to worry about them getting too perfectly sanded down even, but I'm just going to make sure that I get most of that off. So I'm also going to be using one of these little dollar love signs. I think these are perfect that Dollar Tree is uh, coming out with these and we can use these on so many projects, but I'm going to go ahead and pull apart all of these letters. You can see that the letters underneath do still have these little staples in there, so I did just take a small pair of pliers and kind of pull them out. Um, I struggled at first but I found it was way easier just to kind of curl it over so the end pops out versus just trying to pull straight up on these. Uh, they do damage the letter just a tiny bit but I was able to sand that back down and then after I paint this just a solid coat of white uh, you're not able to tell the damage that it caused. I would break, I break these walls too and I would change, I would change just for you. So next I'm just getting everything cleaned up after I had everything sanded down. It does remove some of the paint. So I just want to go ahead and remove all of that with just some wipes to make sure that it doesn't get mixed in with my new coat of paint. I'm also going to be using some of these jumbo popsicle sticks and I like to use these to connect these two signs together. You definitely can feel free to use a real piece of wood or a board that you already have. This is just some, an easy way to make this out of Dollar Tree items. I just start by flipping these signs over. Uh, the front of this sign has little grooves in it, so that's why I want to make sure I'm using the front, but usually I would just flip this over and use a smooth back. But I go ahead and glue a ton of those on there to make sure this is a really sturdy piece and go ahead and fill in the little holes uh, so that they are covered up and they don't show up whenever I paint this. I am trying to do farmhouse colors in like a dark a faux wood color, this sign. So I start by using my truffle paint in the chalk paint and I really like this color but it, whenever it dries it is just kind of a solid brown that I wish had more colors in it so to make it look faux wood I am going to be dry brushing some over there but just for the base coat I'm making sure that I get down in the grooves to make sure that none of those red letters or any dust or anything isn't going to peek through but I ended up just having to do one coat on this and then just touch up the little places like where I mudded the uh, little nail holes so that everything had full coverage and looked really nice nice and smooth. You had me at a low. 
Cause where you go is where I go I don't need nobody else and as you can see, after this has dried, how beautiful those little uh, lines show up in the background. So, um, like I say, I wanted to dry brush over this. So I'm using an older brush where the bristles are all spread out. And I'm going to go over this. This brush had actually dried up really hard in spots. So it didn't go on as evenly as I would like. So I did have to take a wet wipe and try to smooth that out. But I'm so happy that this did happen because I was able to get a softer look with this wood. And I think it looks more realistic realistic just by taking the baby wipe and like I say just kind of blending it and making it um, flow in smoother together. So this is the mineral color by Waverly and this adds just a lighter color to it but then I do go over it with a little bit of black so that I can have the three colors going on but I think it looks so gorgeous and more like realistic wood whenever you do add a ton of different colors in there and get them all blended in together. I got you and you got me too. I also feel like it makes it look a lot more realistic if you add extra paint to the edges and just kind of darken them up. So I really like that effect of it. But as you can see, after I pile all the colors on there, I'm loving that. So I push that aside to dry. And then for the letters, I decided for the O, I was going to do a wreath to make it go more with the farmhouse. So I could add some greenery in there. So I'm just going to be painting these three letters. And I know that the L and the V were already white, but um, this is more of like a bright white color. So um, after I had painted the E and it was so much brighter, I just went ahead and painted all three letters so they would match really nicely. These letters get me so excited that maybe Dollar Tree will keep putting out signs like this. I also picked up one that said family, but if I would have took those apart, it would have been way too long to add to this sign in particular, but those letters would also be very pretty put on a longer board, uh, like if you went to Home Depot and had a board cut, but I'm just so excited. I hope Dollar Tree keeps coming out with little letter signs like this. While I have my white paint out and my paintbrush all wet with paint, I'm going to go ahead and paint my photo frames. Uh, I didn't have two on hand that were exactly the same uh, color. I thought that these two were exactly the same, but um, after I had bought an extra one and got home, I saw that one was a little bit different of a darker shade, but after you paint them, I, you would never know. But um, I do recommend picking up the same one because after I glued these down, I did think that one was just a tiny bit bigger than the other frame. So you'll have to let me know if you notice that in the comments down below. But I went ahead and just painted these white as well and give them uh, two coats, I think, to get full coverage on these. And make sure that you do get on the inside um, because you will be... Uh, gluing these on top of the sign and you will be able to see the inside and um, the outer edges of this frame. And then I'm just laying out uh, my sign to make sure that everything's going to fit nice on there. Make sure I leave plenty of uh, space along the edges and I was going to make my own little wreath. You can definitely purchase one. I just purchased some tiny wreaths from Hobby Lobby that would be perfect. But I have this little branch from Walmart and this was around Christmas time and it does have the glitter on there. That's the only thing I kind of regret about making this sign is that it did have so much glitter on there. So you will be able to see that it does get on the sign. And I did try to blow off some of the glitter with a hairdryer. Um, but I am going to have to take like a wet cloth and try to get some of the glitter off. You'll be able to see in the beauty shots that some of that glitter is still on there, but I will try to get that off. So I pulled some of these greenery stems off of the little floral pick. This was from Walmart for 98 cents. 
and then I'm just going to lay them down in a circle. I went ahead and glued my letters down. I tried to add a ton of hot glue so they wouldn't fall off, but I wanted to go ahead and glue them down uh, just to make sure that I knew exactly how large I wanted my wreath to be. So I just made this little wreath by stacking these little greenery pieces up and I did about three or four layers just to get it nice and uh, tall so it did stick out like the letters. I think that little wreath looks perfect as an O for the love and I like it so much better than just adding the white O in there. And then I'm going to use my white uh, little frames on here and I didn't like how bright white that they were. I just feel like they needed to be a little bit more subtle so that the letters could pop out really bright white. So I'm using some of my still color chalk paint. I'm just going to dry brush this along the edges and I'm so happy that I did do that because it brought out a lot of the texture of the frame and I just like it so much more. It adds a lot more detail to this uh, sign that I made. And then I just keep laying everything out to make sure that I'm going to like the way that it looks. I wanted a background for these little frames, so I picked up one of these large buffalo check gray and white uh, pieces of paper, scrapbooking paper from Hobby Lobby, and I'm going to cut it down. Uh, to fit in the back of this frame. I went ahead and pulled off the little stand and all the metal pieces uh, from this cardboard piece that came on the back of the frames and I'm going to use it as a guide so I just trace it and I cut this out and I will be able to glue all of that on the back and it won't make it stick up from the sign. Whenever I originally thought about this project, I thought I was going to put pictures in it and then glue the whole frame down, but I knew I wouldn't be able to trade the pictures in and out and I didn't like that. So I did try to come up with this way so that I would be able to add different pictures and be able to update them and I would just I knew I would really enjoy uh, being able to update this sign. I did know that these little frames are a tad bit heavier than the letters, so I did try to pack on a ton of hot glue. Um, so you don't have to use this much, or you could try to use something different or more permanent if you would like to. Uh, but I just try to put on a ton of hot glue so that it would stick there. And um, whenever I flipped it over, I just pressed it down onto the sign for a couple of minutes with some pressure to make sure that it really was gonna stay. I had a two pack of these succulents that were on these little alligator clips that I thought would work perfect for this little sign to be able to, like I say, interchange the pictures in and out. I knew I wanted some pretty clips and I didn't just want to do clothes pins again because I feel like I use that on a ton of projects. So I just started by removing the succulents. On this little pair, I ended up actually bending them and um, I worked too hard to get the succulent out, but on the other pair, it just kind of uh, pulled out very easily and it left that little hole there. So I am going to flip this over on the back side and glue this down so you won't be able to see that. But these just make the perfect subtle little clips that I will be able to hook my little photos on. This is just a little photo that was stuck inside of the frame that I cut down to show you kind of an example of what I'm going to do. Just print off some pictures and stick in there. You can use colored pictures or you can use black and white pictures. Um, for my display, I just went ahead and printed them in black and white. But I think this sign turned out so beautiful and definitely looks like something that I would have purchased from the store or I would have picked out if I would have saw this. Um, and it's just a really inexpensive piece that looks so nice. I actually went ahead and hung it up on the wall and styled it with some of my favorite farmhouse decor. I'm so 
glad you came back and joined me today. This was such a fun project to put together. I think it turned out gorgeous and you can customize this different colors or display different photos. And I love how the photo part was made so that you can easily change them out and update your photos. So I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Make sure you are subscribed and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.